Hi, I'm Nick with Duramax Tuner. Today on Diesel Insights, we have the 2024 L5P turbocharger. Now you guys know for new for 24 is the higher power rating. So we went to 475 horsepower up from 445. So an extra 30 horsepower. We know the new engine has a few things in the oiling system that are improved, but most notably I would say is the turbocharger. It's not all about bigger is better. And that's part of the interest that we have here at Duramax Tuner. So we do a lot of aftermarket uh, turbochargers for these trucks. We do the STR, we do the Stealth 64, the Stealth 67. Of course, we're gonna be curious what the factory has changed in 24 to improve uh, for the higher power uh, setup for the L5P. So let's stay tuned while we tear it apart, see what's changed, maybe think about why, talk about how that compares to what we have on the market right now. There's not exactly an alphabetical way to go through a turbocharger, so I'm just gonna start at the turbine side and go to the compressor side. So the 17 to 23 truck uses this older style cast iron turbine housing. It's got two holes that go straight down and two that are kind of offset and then a dowel to hold it down. Um, pretty similar setup for 24, except the flange does change. So these are not, not the same flange pattern. Presumably for install on the line would be my guess, uh, changing this one. Material looks the same. Uh, flange positions look similar for the uh, DOC and for the center section. One of the interesting points that I saw when I compared these two exhaust housings is that the old style uses an indexing pin to put the veins in the exhaust housing. Now, just so you kind of understand how that works, the veins will sit in the exhaust housing at a certain position, and then the exhaust housing will be indexed to the center section, and then the whole assembly is basically designed to work with a pretty close tolerance from there. So the electronic control of these veins is, is pretty tightly controlled from there. So to have multiple indexing pieces on multiple parts is a little, you know, makes things, uh, makes for a little more chaos maybe than the 24 model. The 24 model, instead of using the indexing pin in the exhaust housing, indexes the nozzle assembly uh, directly to the center section. And ev basically everything is indexed off the center section and then the center section is indexed to the exhaust housing. Um, it's a smarter design, in my opinion, makes for ease of assembly and ease of QC. Uh, it's just basically a better design. Let's go to the vein assemblies because they are majorly changed for 24. The 17 through 23 truck uses this piece here. It's a really nice piece. Um, a lot of die cast parts. This is an expensive part to make. It has a 9 millimeter, 9.4 millimeter opening. So basically all your exhaust gas is flowing through that 9.4 millimeter opening right here from the veins onto the turbine wheel, okay? And when you're assembling this piece, it might not look like it because I'm not pulling it apart, but basically if I move any of these pieces, the whole thing comes apart and it's a little bit of a pain in the butt to assemble. So assembly wise, this is a little more of a delicate piece. Now they have to be shipped, tie wrapped. Uh, they have to be handled basically fairly fragilely. The 2024 model goes to this a little bit more robust design. It's, I would call it more self-contained. Um, the other interesting part is the measurement on it. They go from a 9.4 millimeter opening to an 11 millimeter opening. So this, all the exhaust gas now goes through that 11 millimeter opening and we go through fewer veins that are longer. So instead of 13 veins on the old style, we're now going through 11 veins. What that is is basically a higher flow system. So a wider volute uh, and then fewer fewer nozzles, which means more, uh, more room between those nozzles, larger nozzles. That's interesting. That's a very similar size to what we use in our stealth program, which we find works really well. So kind of a validating thought right there that, uh, you know, the stealth and the 24 use a very similar nozzle ring. Okay. So let's talk about these center sections as far as what's different between them on the uh, 23 versus 24. So the 23 is a much bigger piece compared to the 24. The 23 basically has the backing plate and the center section built into one unit. So it's uh, physically heavier, it's beefier, uh, it's just a bigger piece to handle. It also has a kind of a unique capture system for the thrust bearing. You can see there is, is captured inside there. And then we have basically this piece that goes on and the snap ring that holds it in place. Now the 24 is a smaller center section physically. The thrust bearing in the 24 is a bolt in place, kind of like the older eye highs. And it also has this oil deflector ring, which is new for 24. Uh, basically the design is a, I would say a more like an old style design. 
On 24, we go to a backing plate. So 23 did not have a backing plate. This is the backing plate for 24. The actuator mechanism is mounted to the backing plate now. I think this is an easier part to produce than the old compressor cover, which had the uh, actuator mount bolted to it. So you can kind of see there, like, this is a really bulky, awkward piece to handle. This is not so much an awkward, bulky piece to handle. Compressor cover for 24 is a more traditional looking compressor cover. It does not have the actuator mount mated to it. Like we said, the 23 is this kind of big, awkward piece. It's got that actuator mount cast into it. So I'm guessing that uh, the bean counters might have got involved here and said, hey, you know, you got a lot of, we got a lot of casting <laughs> uh, uh, flow paths and kind of extra work in the casting there. So maybe go back to a traditional style on that. Actuators themselves are different. This is the actuator for the 2020. Um, the 17 through 19 is one style, the 2020 to 2023 is a different style. They look very physically similar. They mount to the compressor cover. Uh, the actuator looks different for 24. I don't know what's different inside. We have not tore one apart, but I can tell you that the physically they look different and the plugs are different. Okay, so we got through the basics. We got through the physical dimensions. Let's talk about the wheels. You guys who know this thing is making more horsepower, you want to know how much bigger is the compressor wheel? What did they change on the turbine wheel? Tell me, tell me, tell me. Compressor wheel on the old turbocharger is 61.1 millimeters. It's an 11 blade billet compressor wheel. Uh, it's a pretty pretty solid piece for, uh, for the OEMs. Usually we don't see billet wheels. That's kind of a new thing. Uh, the 11 blade is pretty common. That's kind of an anti-surge setup. The new style is 61.3 millimeters. So only a 0.2 millimeter growth in the inducer of the compressor wheel. The exducer actually shrank a little bit. So this is an 80, the old style is an 84 millimeter. Uh, the new style is a 82 millimeter. So we shrank two millimeters in the exducer. Um, what that means is that the trim is gonna shorten up a little bit. Uh, we are operating the truck in that narrower rev range with the 10 speed. I think that's probably kind of where that comes from. Um, smaller wheels are also quicker to respond overall. So if you can get weight away from the outside of the wheel, that's gonna lighten the wheels inertia up and make it a little quicker. So not a lot of change in the compressor wheel for that extra horsepower. Interesting. Turbine side, let's talk about that. The first thing you notice is that the width of the uh, inducer blades is wider. So we go from that 9.4 millimeter cage to the 11 millimeter cage. Of course, we're gonna have wider blades to accept those wider veins. Then we go to the count. So we're going from, a, uh, from an 11 blade turbine to a 10 blade turbine. What that would suggest is a higher flow turbine. So usually you do that with more power or more top end, uh, looking at cool EGTs a little bit. It also lightens the turbine up a little bit. Overall size, so 70.11 millimeters to 70.0 millimeters on the new stuff. So very close in measurement there. That could just be measuring uh, the different blade counts. They get kind of difficult to measure with the 11 blade. Um, Exducer, we're gonna grow from 62.5 to 63.9. So just a millimeter and a half on the exducer. That's a, a, something you would do to grow uh, exhaust flow. Again, the larger the exducer, the better the exhaust is gonna flow. With a higher power turbine, that's something we would expect to see. Okay, so to summarize on the wheels, we have a very small change in the compressor side. And that makes sense because we know the truck had a lot of overhead in it to begin with. We've tuned these for six years now. We know that you can make quite a bit more power with the stock turbocharger. Interesting part really is on the turbine side. So we went from 9.4 millimeter vein to an 11 millimeter vein. We went from uh, the 62 and a half millimeter exducer to the 64 millimeter exducer. We went from 11 blades to 10. So all those improvements on the turbine side are really looking to get exhaust out of the system, lighten up the turbine, basically make the truck run better at higher outputs. That all makes sense to me. I would love to be able to tell you how much more horsepower you can make on this 2024 turbocharger. Unfortunately, we don't quite have tuning available for those yet. Once we do, you can guarantee we'll be pushing that turbocharger to see what its limits are. And in the meantime, we'll probably do a little bit of scratching around and see how we can improve the turbo so that we're ready when the tuning comes out. Hope you enjoyed this section on tech content. This has been Diesel Insights with Nick Pregnant, DuramaxTuner.com. We'll catch you in the next one.